Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Episode 31. For those of you keeping track at home, 31 in your playbook, number one in your heart. Hello, Aaron. We are in week... Yep. Well, we're week three of the NFL season and podcast number 31. We have our good friend and colleague, Peter Schrager, on the podcast today. For those of you that um, ever watched Quarantine q and it was a little show that we did to all stay together talking about football. It was on... What did we... we were on digital? Whatever we were on. Every now Who and knows? then we made it onto TV. Who knows? But um, we love Schrager. And we have got a great story for you guys. We had a great dinner over the weekend with a lot of hilarity that ensued. So he will join us later. How yeah. was your week? You were actually off on a Sunday. Was that weird? Well, I FaceTimed you um, feeling mm-hmm. very hungover. But um, yeah, it's always weird because you feel like you need to be just like involved, know the storylines. I mean, I was texting you nonstop about what you were hearing about injuries, uh, watching the Carolina game, watching the Tampa game. Um, for our games this weekend. So it's just crazy. Mondays are nutty for me when I have two games in one week because you're trying to get, you know, mm-hmm. everything done before you leave on Wednesday. And then you've got a game Sunday. We've got th- something to go to on Saturday. It's a whole situation. A you whole know? situation. Since we were on here last week, though, you went to Washington for your Thursday night game. And yep. there was a ter- you've been really great on the IG, by the way. For those of you that don't follow us on Instagram, you should. Aaron puts amazing stuff on there. I'm still working. I need to be better. Although At I Calm do Down have- Podcast. Check it out. Yep. And also, she's wearing our Calm Down sweatshirt, which if you want any of our merch, calmdownpod.com for all of that. How cute was um, Brittany, who uh, does my makeup on Sundays, and her mom, Jeanette, works at Fox. I saw her in the hallways, and she had a Calm Down sweatshirt on. She was like, do you Aww, like my... I know, wasn't so that sweet? sweet. She yeah. bought it, so I thought that was very <laughs> sweet. But um, you had a game on Thursday in... Yep. Washington and it was a torrential downpour. What, what are we doing now? You put the rain pants on. When did the rain oh, pants I had, come off? I had full gear on. It was a torrential downpour. There was um, shelter in place, flooding, all the things um, for pregame. I was excited to get out on the field, talk to the guys as they're warming up, grab Sterling Shepard, grab, um, you know, Saquon, see how he's doing, grabbing some guys from the defense. And all of a sudden it's raining cats and dogs. I am way too old to be out there in the pouring rain. I was like, nope, been there, done that. So I just stayed in front of their locker room and waited for them to come out and said hi to guys. And they were all making fun of my head to toe, rain pants, rain coat, rain hat. And then literally four minutes before my first hit, it stopped raining and I was like, F this. And I ripped it all off and still had my rain boots on and did the thing. And the game was crazy. Like I thought actually Daniel Jones, I had New York sideline. It was crazy. Um, Taylor Heineke, I screwed his name up on uh, halftime and that, and you're beating yourself up over it. And I'm like, you're human and you know, his name's Taylor and we're fine. I apologize, Taylor, not Tyler. Um, Yeah, no, those are the things that give me chest pains. You could do a total, like a game and it could go well. It didn't go my side's way, so I didn't have the post-game interview. But then you get in the car and you look at Twitter and people are like, you dumbass, it's Taylor, not Tyler. And it ruins your night, ruins your night. Oh, but I think that there's a lesson in this. And we were talking about it actually at dinner, how much I appreciate how hard you are on yourself after something like that, because you have been in this, you're the top, in this industry at your job and you still beat yourself up over it. And what I equated that to is, you know, the Tom Brady's of the world and the guys that are at the top of their respective sport and still beat up on themselves for the mistakes that they made. And so I can appreciate that you're competitive. I can appreciate that you appreciate, 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 and appreciate that you respect your position enough to make sure that you do it correctly, but you're also allowed an error. No one's questioning your intelligence. My favorite is when Twitter's like, you're an idiot and they use the wrong use of your. So you know what? Yeah, we're good here. Um, but that's okay. So that was Thursday night and then you got to watch games on Sunday. So that's always fun. And yes, yes. Excited uh, about the Monday night game tonight to see how Green Bay rebounds. What do you have going on? Because I well, feel like you, you have a story would, you've been teasing. Okay. So uh, you and I communicate throughout the day, all day, every day. And I was like wanting to tell you this story as it was happening in real time so bad, but I was like, I'm going to save it for the pod because I'm dying to know your take on it. Okay. So I'm going to set the scene. I take the dogs, the days that the dogs, can I talk the days that the dogs don't go with their dog walker? I take them to the dog park because I always feel like you have to, you know, these big dogs need to run. 
go to a dog park right by my house. Been doing this for years, years. I mean, Willis, I've had Willis eight years. I've had Daisy four years. We get it. Normal day at the dog park. And all of a sudden, I'm walking towards the gate to go grab Daisy because I'm going to put her uh, collar back on and we're going to leave. And I see a police officer walking into the park. And I was like, ooh, someone's in trouble. And the, like you do. the police officer goes, whose shepherd is that? The Sterling Sh- Shepherd? No. I said, oh, <laughs> it's, it's mine. Why? And he goes, do you have a license for the shepherd? And I go, uh, I don't know what that means. I was like, a license. Is he driving? Yeah. I was like, I mean, I wish he could drive. I mean, I too would love a driver. Um, Donald Driver? Okay. Stop playing this game. Um, I was like, I don't have a license uh, for the dog. I was like, I adopted her. Like, do you want that paperwork? Like, what do you mean a license? And he goes, oh, then you're going to be, you're going to be fined. And he pulls out his little tab. What? And I go, what are you talking about? I've never, I go, I've never heard of this in my life. And he points to this obscure sign that is freaking in the other side of the park. And he was like, it says very clearly in the Santa Monica jurisdiction, you need to have a license for your dog. And I was like, what? I, so then Kyle's with me um, in the dog park and he was like, sir, what's the problem? My here? husband's a lawyer. Yeah. And I, and I will help him use it. And so I was like, well, I, I so Kyle intervenes because at this point you better walk. I, I'm not good with authority. Oh, yeah, I start yeah, questioning yeah. I authorities and now I'm in handcuffs and we've got a whole problem. So oh, Kyle boy. being the mild mannered person, he's like, sir, what's the problem here? And he was like, as I was telling your wife, you need to have your dog license. Meanwhile, I'm going to get Willis now because I'm like, we're out of here. And I go, oh, sir, are you going to give the do- all these other people in here a ticket too? And he was like, well, I can only give one ticket at a time. Meanwhile, like little ants, everyone's fleeing the dog park because they see what's happening. And I go, oh, there's there's a ticket there. I'm pointing at everyone as they're leaving the dog park. I go, hold on. Wait, you got to give them a ticket. I'm now I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm how much is this offense you've committed? Thank or you. Crime so you. I go committed. and get Willis and he goes, wait a minute, you have two dogs. And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, I'm going to give you a courtesy and only give you a ticket for one. I go, absolutely not, sir. I said, I am not a rule breaker. I said, you give me a ticket for both of those dogs. Don't do me any favors. It's a hundred bucks. Per dog. Or what? For what, what did you do? Wrong? Literally for what? Exactly. Okay. Turn so down then for what? I, exactly. And who let the dogs out? Not me anymore. Not at that park. I well, won't. Apparently you did. You got not a with Paul Blart Mall Cop. I said, I literally, I was like, do you have nothing to do today? What's going on here? Is he packing? Did he even have a gun? And I didn't see a gun. I didn't know. Yeah. No. Well, then you know what? That's when people say I'm dating a model. Well, uh, let me know. She's been in vogue. Y- She's not a me model. Know. Yeah, a real model. So I was so, and then at this point, again, I'm like, I'm so angry. And while he's taking his sweet ass time to fill out everything other than my social security number on this ticket. Right. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to leave my dog on a leash. I let them both off. I go, guys, run around, run around. Because I was like, I'm not going to stand. What's Kyle was, doing at this Kyle, moment? of course, is like trying to get me under control. And I was like, sir, does it make you? F-? And then I saw the body cam and I was like, Carissa, lock it up. Okay. I was like, oh, let's not get out of control. Cam. So I just politely took my ticket after that. I gave him the correct address. And I was like, you know what? I will look into seeing how I can license my dog. I'm sorry that I'm at the dog park. So as this is happening, another girl starts to walk into the dog park. And I'm like, I'm going to save her. I am I go, do you have a license for your dog? And she goes, what? I go, exactly. I go, go. I go, get out of here. You're going to get a ticket. I, no, I'm not kidding. She's like opening up the gate. I go over to her. I put my hand on the small of her back and I'm ushering her out of the dog park. <laughs> I was like, leave, leave now. Leave. I'm, so, I'm out there doing it. So then you'll appreciate this. The next day, I'm like, fuck it. I got to go back to the dog park. The dogs need to run around. So I took my ticket. I taped it to my chest. I went back to the dog park. And if Paul Blart was there, I was going to say, I already got a ticket for this and I'm working on it. I've got 30 days, according to the citation, to get a license. So every day I show up at this dog park in between, I'm going to tape that ticket to my chest. And I sat there in the dog park with the ticket on my chest. Parks closed. Moose out front. Should have told you. That's a little John Candy security line for you. Um, That is crazy. How are people supposed to know that? Are you joking, sir? Like, oh. you're not trying to break the law. What is this? Literally, I don't have my bigger things to worry about out there. Could Thank someone you. figure out this COVID mess before we're ticketing? I mean, what license to kill? What are we doing? I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I go, oh, I'm sorry that I was adopting a dog. Like, I like, I was like, stood on my high horse of adoption. <laughs> like, we're leaving. Oh, man. Anyway, so for those of you out there that have never licensed your dog, don't go to the Santa Monica Dog Park.
this guy, I mean, I got a question because here I start thinking conspiracy theories. Do you think somebody told on you? Do you think somebody saw you out there and somebody told? Well, the only reason I feel like he didn't is because, or that it wasn't a conspiracy, because the one remaining soul in the dog park, after we left, I saw him walk up to like try to give somebody else a ticket that wasn't smart enough to leave with, you know, the mass exodus that was out of there before. But this this girl was so cute. She waited for me in the parking lot. She goes, thank you so much. I've never heard of that. I was like, me neither. I'd go to court over that just to create a stink, oh, you know? You know what? I'm going to get Matthew McConaughey in there, Kyle Thousand, to go throw on a suit. And we've got a job for you today, kid. This is the dumbest thing dumbest. I've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. You wear your mask on a plane. You don't take it off. Mm -hmm. You're a, a law abiding citizen. And this is the shit you get. Yeah. And it wasn't like my dog was off the leash in the streets, just roaming freely. You I'm love in a cops. dog park. You love the military. I like, come on. Are you kidding me? I've dated cops and people in the military. I love them all. I've never dated a cop, but I would. No one screams you have to say more than you. <laughs> Seriously. Come on. That's my American flag that's hanging up in the media room. I swear to God. But anyways, I, I want to use this as a public service announcement. I appreciate that there's, you know, people out there patrolling the streets. But can we get me a warning next time? Not a ticket? Give a girl a warning, you know? Anyways, we'll be back with more. Tregs, I'm up next. Is it is it upside down and backwards or is no? It's right? perfect. <laughs> okay. It's perfect. Okay, we don't have you very long. How are we doing? Okay, this? we don't even need to start. Look at this guy. The scene of the crime. I think we'll call this. Big shout um, out to Craig. Tell oh me my when we're starting because I'm trying we're to get starting. To... Oh, We've yeah. already started. <laughs> We've oh already my bad. Started. <laughs> Sorry. I just love. Peter Schrager, our friend, and I'd love to say how many jobs he has. He has 700 and hopefully a brand new job coming up soon. We won't touch on it. Yeah, yet, we're we'll very see. excited. <laughs> um, but the best part is when we all decided to get together on Saturday, this past Saturday, and we'll get to that in just a minute. We talked about you being on the podcast, and I think I was worried because I was like, is this going to be all football? Now we're not even going to talk football. <laughs> no, can I, by the way, I'm flattered to be on the podcast. I've watched uh, the Brian Baumgartner recently. I oh. watched I watched the Kevin Hart out of the gates, which was a big, big, big get. Um, I'm happy to be on episode 31. I feel like <laughs> if I if I didn't make the top 50, I would have been concerned. But if I'm on 31, I'm good. Only we didn't make Schrager yours. does, damn it. But only Schrager does film study on podcasts. The fact that I you wanted to see. Come. I wanted to see. Oh Clicked on God. the only two I gave a shit about, but other than that, um, How no. about, this is a re be, by the way, this is a we're reunited of quarantine Q and A. Let's not remember. Well, let's not forget yeah, where this all started. started. We had a show, but here's my deal. Um, no one watched. It's fine. No, it was good. Um, it was so good. Mondays I do Good Morning Football. Tuesdays I do Good Morning Football and Colin Coward Show. Wednesdays I have to write a column. I can go through everything. Sunday night. Cool. I get in bed and I'm like, I'm going to watch the Sunday night game. I'm so tired. I do the Monday morning show. So I, I'm like seven days a week football during football season. And I usually around like week eight or week nine, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm like I'm a little footballed out. I'd love anything. I'd love to watch. It's week two. I might be footballed out. Like I, I, I and then to hear that we're talking football on this podcast, I'm like, no, 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 no. Anything we're other not. than football. Let's do it. Well, I got a new we're show not. for you. Scenes, for, scenes from a marriage. Oh shit. You guys, that is Okay. Don't watch it if you have a dysfunctional Wait, relationship. So Oscar Isaac is a is a Brooklyn guy. Okay. Oh. I see him a bunch. Are you into Oscar Isaac? Is he hot or is he like too artsy fartsy for you guys? Too artsy for up. me, but his acting in this, I'm now into it because I'm a huge Jessica Chastain fan, but maybe we'll see her next time at Craig's. We only have you for a second because of all your jobs you just mentioned. So yeah. Aaron Are they dating in real life? No, um, he's married. He's married with two kids. But didn't he like caress her arm? Yes, Wasn't that a whole thing? Out in Venice on the red carpet. Yes. Yeah, he like touched and caressed her arm. But he's a great dad. I see him around with the kids. He seems like the man. I don't like to talk out of school here. I don't know what's no, going no, on in no, Hollywood. We but... could talk about the word caressed. I'm not into that word. That's a great caress. word. They're not together? No, just... Promo yeah. shoot. Whoa. Um, it's like ours. Um, so let's set the scene of the crime because we're not going to talk about football. We're going to talk about me going out on a school night, but it was really a school night for the two of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Aaron didn't have a game on Sunday, which rarely ever happens because she did the Thursday night game. So we were on a text chain earlier in the week <laughs> asking Shregs if we wanted to do a dinner. Of course, we always want to spend time with him because he's in town um, in LA on the weekends for our show on Sunday. 
We said, who else would we want to invite to this dinner? We throw out a feeler to Colin Coward. He's all very busy. He didn't attend his loss because his problem. We'll alternate on who tells the story. But Shregs, I feel like you're a really good storyteller. And as yeah. our guest, be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you should start the story. I get, an Uber. I get an Uber to a restaurant, which I'd never heard of, admittedly, called what? Craig's. I'm not a LA guy. I don't do LA thing. I usually fly in. I sit at the hotel. I get my Jersey mics. I go to bed at seven o'clock. Um, in this case- Do you really get Jersey mics? Of course. Of course. Club sub, number okay. nine. Mike's way, all the oil and vinegar and everything. It's great. It's delicious. Um, <laughs> not paid your tummy? endorser. Sorry. Um, but I try to stay on East Coast time, honestly. So I get into LA on a Saturday. I do all my work for the show that Carissa and I are on, Fox NFL kickoff, and I prepare. And then I like to get to bed by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, knowing if I stay on East Coast time, my, my body's going to be all right. Well, you guys are like, let's get dinner. I'm like, great. Could we do it at 6 p.m.? Thinking I would be in bed by 7 o'clock. We just get a quick bite. We went to the coolest, trendiest, really good restaurant too. And I got there at six o'clock and it was empty. By 6.07, <laughs> this place was absolutely packed. And you know, I'm like, who's a reservation under? They're like, it's under Carissa. I'm like, I'm here for Thompson, whatever. They pointed us to a table that looked like it would be a bad one because it was literally <laughs> on the men's bathroom. It was literally, there was a restroom and us. And I'm like, well, oof, I guess, uh, okay. No poll. No poll. No Thompson. Poll. Okay, Thompson. Um, you guys know, uh, should we have gone with another name? Um, but we get there <laughs> and we're having a good time. And the owner of the restaurant comes by, this gentleman named Craig. He seemed like a darling. And it looked like it was going okay. And I don't know, when do I pass the baton to when Jim Nance walks in? Okay, there's all, so Craig- <laughs> We didn't even down. know he was there. We did it. Craig sits down and he's so wonderful. And he's like, how are you guys doing? How's the evening going? Da, 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 da. And he goes- Love this guy. Jim, the best. Jim Nance and Dr. Elitraj are here. You guys should go say hi. The famed doctor that is the Rams uh, and the Dodgers doctor performs like, you know, he's, he does the best of the but best. Tom Brady's knee together. He's Brady's the guy. Knee together. Yeah, exactly. So we're like, well, we don't want to bother them. We don't want to go say hi. And he's like, no, no, no. They'd like to say hi to you. No, they wouldn't. But OK, so we get up reluctantly. We go over, say hi to J Jim and Dr. Elitraj. And we're just chatting. Could not chatting. be better. Could not be friendlier. We walked right over and said, hello, friends. Hello, we friend. Did. Angel that he is. And Aaron will be modest. So she's not going to say this, but I'll say this. Dr. Elitraj goes, oh, Tom and I were just talking about you, Aaron. <laughs> casual. So here we go. Now, Jim has said, I'm also moving to Nashville. You're moving to Nashville. We're having a great time. This conversation. I got to say, the third gentleman at the table is a gentleman named Jim Rickoff, who is their producer, the equivalent of the Richie at Zions on Rich the Russo. Fox A game or, or Richie, Rich Russo. You might hear those names. And Rickoff is a TV legend too. So immediately I glob on to him to just talk, you know, <laughs> war stories and all that stuff. I love the sports media stuff. And okay, so is Romo still before. got his fastball? Yeah, super nice guy. Yeah. yeah. What I'm did he say, him. by the way? Oh, he says Romo's the man. I'm like, okay, let's see. I don't you know the predicting plays thing. I don't know. You know, so we're having a we're having a blast. And it's it's three of us, three of them with kind of combined tables now. So now you got sports media powerhouse, yeah. Aaron Andrews, it was going sports down. media powerhouse, Jim Nance, Carissa. This doctor, Jim Rickoff, and myself. A good, if, if I went home right there, I'd say that is a good crew. And if, you know, I, you told me I got to see Jim Nance in LA at a restaurant, cool. Send me on my way. Let's go. Hello, friends. But there's more. And at that point, I was still in the tequila sodas. Like, I was good with just having three. As I was stressing to the two of you, I had Carolina Panthers film I needed to go see. You two had an early bedtime. But then Craig laid it on us that NARS. The NARS, I know, again, not a big uh, thing for you, Peter, at this moment of your life, maybe at, at some moment. <laughs> NARS, the big makeup company. Like he's wearing Malibu line. bronzer and I need some it, right now. <laughs> I do too. Was having a big dinner outside. So again, two tequilas. I'm great. Got Carolina footage to watch. Let's go. Let's go talk to them about their So who's them? It's like lush. the CEO of NARS? Who was it's it? It's like all of the powerhouse people of NARS, which again, Aaron, if it's free, it's The me. influencers? I, like Instagram influencers? No, the oh. people. The, the exactly. people of NARS. Mm -hmm. and what the did Jim we Rickoffs say? of NARS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. What did we okay. say right away, Carissa, when we heard NARS was there? Orgasm blood. Orgasm! Blush. Anyone yeah. that knows, and by the way, we yell uh, orgasm in the middle of Craig, so then that doesn't Jim Nance go. was like, friends, friends, it's third and four, let's keep it down. Let's go. We've got, we've got Justin Spieth on six. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turning or amen corner coming around the corner. Um, so we go outside. We we ask, of course, for free samples. So that's great. We're excited at this point. We've had Nance. We've got <laughs> Ella Trash. We got. Can I tell uh, you what's going on at the table while you guys are doing the Nars thing? I am getting to know our waiter. Who I'm a married <laughs> man. I have a. Ch- I fell in love with the waiter, male waiter named Brian. And he's a Bills fan and he charms me and is like, I watch you in the mornings on Good Morning Football. Do we have a shot tomorrow in Miami? I'm like, a shot? You guys are going to blow them out. Tua, I don't know. So me and Brian, while you guys are doing your makeup lines, me and Brian are, I don't know, hot. It it was good. Brian, once Brian figured out who you were, Brian couldn't stop. Like he had a ton of questions for you. (laughs) Every five seconds was asking, can I get you anything else? I was like, Brian, you want to sit down? There's an open chair. It's supposed to be Colin, but it seems like it's now your opportunity. So you know what? Wally pipped. So then we come back from the NARS uh, seminar convention and we sit back down and Aaron, I think you saw Randy Gerber or I did or somebody. I was like, oh, there's Randy Gerber. And where Randy, where Randy Gerber is, George Clooney is not far behind. We so, hope. Sometimes he's in Italy. You know what? I, too, would be in uh, uh, Lake Como if I could. So he goes into this private room and I'm like, what's going on in there? You know, oh, and the doors open, the sliding doors open. And now this, this table let me, that let we- me chime in. Let me chime go, in. Go, go, you're on no. it. Our table <laughs> literally, so our table, <laughs> our table literally, <laughs> when they see us. <laughs> when they seated us at the table, my New Yorker in me was borderline offended. I thought we were on a toilet. Literally, it was that close to the bathroom. What I didn't realize was that we were adjacent to a private room. And I'm thinking, all right, I don't know what's going on. Go on with the Randy Gerber. Carissa, take it from here. Well, no, you're a better story. Okay, I'll just say this. So You're better. The, go. The doors open and we're like, ooh, what's happening? And so I have a sight line, a better sight line. If you, Shregs, you and I do because Aaron's backs to it. And I, I, at this point, I want anyone to be George Clooney. So I'm like, oh, you guys, I just saw him. I just saw him. And, and Shregs, you're like, is that and him? You guys oh, it's are him. wrong. It's him. Off expediting the story, the doors open later at some point, And then we really see that not the guy that I thought was him or Ray Liotta at one point. I diagnosed yep. incorrectly. She said, no, no, it's Ray Liotta. I think Ray Liotta. <laughs> Ray Li- <laughs> By the way, who used to work in entertainment? I'd get all the celebrities wrong. Shocker. But I'm not going to get George Clooney wrong because the last time I saw him, I was inebriated on a red carpet with him. So how could I forget that? So the doors open and I see him. It's like a, a, a glow. Oh, there was a halo. There, there was, was a halo. Was like and I opened. can't see him at this point. And there's women I can see in my view because mm-hmm. my back is to the door and all the women look in and go, oh my God. It's like me seeing Mickey Mouse. It's like, <laughs> there he is. Like women. And there were like European women yeah. and they couldn't stop. And if anyone's there with their date, fuck the date yeah. because yeah. they are like, there he is. So even, then, Brian, even Brian uh, got a Brian seat on the bed. Shit. Brian didn't give a shit. Brian was into Schrager um, and I was into him. So Brian <laughs> Brian has the, the private room wide open and I'm like, dude, close the private door. I mean, literally, there would be like 24-year-old Ukrainian women like creeping up and taking shots, <laughs> taking pictures of like George Clooney sitting and drinking. I'm like, come on, he doesn't want this. They were lined up going to the bathroom, remember? They were fake, they were fake lining up going to the bathroom, pretending they had to go to the bathroom and then they were sneaking in photos. It was creepy. This I'd never seen after that before. I see that line to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom and so I go into the men's room to go to the bathroom. Then I get accosted <laughs> from security saying I'm not allowed to do that. That was the second time this week I've went into the men's restroom when I'm not supposed to, but that's not important here. Shregs, go. That's it. Hey, if at first you fail... You know, that's, that's, you go for it. Um, I love that. So I'm talking to Brian and then I'm talking to someone. I'm like, close the door. I'm nobody and we're nobody compared to George Clooney, but let's close the door against privacy. And Craig interjects, comes over like, no, 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 no. These guys haven't hung out together in like a year because of COVID. This is their first time hanging. They don't want to be trapped in this private room. They want the doors open. And I'm like, well then let's go. Hello, friends is right. And then we think of a plan. Mm-hmm. And that plan is Schrager goes, everyone loves Jim Nance. I go, <laughs> I'm on to you. Oh, I'm like, there's no way we're leaving this place without a full party in this room together. So 
Jim Nance enters the scene and the doors you open. You bring him in. I bring him in. I go over and get Jim. Of course, he wants to say hello. George wants to say hi to Jim. It's a whole thing. And ta-da. So once Jim enters the room, now the floodgates open. Greg <laughs> comes in. Aaron comes in. We got the whole get along no, gang. No, 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 Aaron, no, no. Aaron timidly no. walked in Trigger the room. Trigger and I were hiding. We were hiding. Sure, you I, tell our side of the story. I thought it was adorable. And I have known Aaron now for a couple of years. We don't go back 20 years. I don't know you guys socially, like when we're out, like Aaron was the, the, the oh, most shy. adorable, shy, like it was almost like she saw like, you know, the star of ER and didn't want to bother him at, at, you know, at the table that she's been watching since the nineties or whatever it is. Carissa, you're, you're out there, you're going, you're making these efforts for all of us to be friends. You're the best. I, I need you you're always the out there. The best. Aaron is sitting there. Like, do we go over? What thing? And then Craig, to his credit, is like, guys, come on in. What are we doing here? Just come on in. Be comfortable. Puts us at the table with Clooney no! and his crew. And I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I mean, what at does this Clooney point, say? I'm, I'm what does Clooney minutes. say to Aaron? He says, oh, Aaron, Andrews, I'm a huge fan. Exactly. And she was like, you watch me. And then she's like, this is Peter Schrager. He's on Good Morning Football. And I was like, yeah, you're adorable. He's giving like- cool. It was great. And the whole room cheered for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then my line was, I'm here with both of them. And guys, you're probably wondering, who is this guy? I will exit left. And I got a little chuckle out of everybody. It was good. I, I left too really you. fast. I was so uncomfortable. I me. left. Uh, and yet, as cool as Clooney is, and he was so nice to us, and he was so, so gracious, nice. and he was so friendly, my childhood idol walked in a few minutes later, and I didn't have the courage to say a word to this person. Do you mean that woman? Yes. Mole that was your idol? The, uh, you I'm a blue uh, he's not. He's, he's, he's misusing the word. It's not idol. His, his crush. Not idol. His, I'm a warm-blooded American male. Male. Uh, for the listeners, <clears throat> Cindy Crawford the, walks in the room. Oh, yeah. I forgot she walked in. <laughs> <laughs> to the point I yelled, who is this broad? Because no, I did saw it. another broad. No, you did it. Yes, I did. I thought she would, not to her, but to you. I said it to Craig and she, you guys. You didn't, saw, you didn't see her face. Yeah, because I didn't see her face. I just saw her like body and her hair. And I said, there's another girl trying to get yes. in there. Well, yeah, it's Cindy Crawford trying to go in to say hello to her husband and her Cindy friend. Cindy Crawford, who I'm I don't know. Tick. I'm not, again, I am not a TMZ guy. I'm not a celebrity gossip guy. Cindy Crawford, um, when I was a kid, the Pepsi commercial, everything. I mean, oh, the, the movie video. Copycat. Every, you want to go down the list. I love Cindy Crawford. <laughs> she looked angelic, Incredible. Mm -hmm. beautiful. So yeah. And she's married to Randy Gerber, who was at the table and his partners with George Clooney and the liquor company. And I, I, at that point, I'm like, I am a kid from Freehold, New Jersey, <laughs> who grew up eating McDonald's and playing Manhunt with my friends in the cul-de-sac. I'm at a table with George Clooney, Cindy Crawford, Jim Nance. I'll throw Aaron Andrews, Carissa Thompson, and I'm like, this is too much. It's time, for, it's time for me to call the Uber. It's just, it's not going to get any better than this. And I did, and that is where we exit. And oh my um, God, if I wanted a welcome to Los Angeles night, I had it with you too. And then uh, let's do a flashback. So we'll do an early dinner, right? Six o'clock? <laughs> Six o'clock. Perfect. I didn't watch film and I had the worst headache the next day. I mean, Carissa was like ordering drinks and kept pouring her drink into mine. That's my fault. Can I, I tell you something? Them. Carissa yeah. had as good of a Fox NFL kickoff as she's ever had. Honestly, <laughs> she was on fire. Great energy. On point. Follow up questions. Like if you watched yesterday's show, we were really good as a show. And I would say Carissa was our leader and was fantastic. Okay. And I, love I had no you, doubt Greg. she would. No You're, doubt. You know who's that. watching? But George Clooney, he told oh, yeah, us. I'm sure he, was. he did tell us because I went into a whole 10 minute long dissertation about my time in Cincinnati, which consisted of 10 minutes and my <laughs> Joe, Joe Burrow interview. I was like, so what do you think? He was probably like, can we just get back to the group dinner I was with as I'm trying to like break down the, you know, state of the union with him and the Cincinnati Bengals. But how is it? He, I, I used to always say the bigger the star, the nicer they are. And when people would ask me who was my favorite person to interview and it was always him. Like he is just, at, now you guys can attest, like the nicest, most down to earth person. And when in doubt, invite Jim with... Nance because no one doesn't oh love God. Jim Nance. Well, it's not only no one doesn't love, everyone sees comfort in Jim Nance because yeah. Yeah. you've watched the Masters, you've cried to watching Phil on the 17th hole. Like you, you, you've you done it all with Jim Nance. He's called the final four. He's called, so like 
even if you're George Clooney or Leo DiCaprio or Justin Timberlake or, or Ray Kevin Liotta. Hart or whoever, or Ray Liotta, Ray Liotta. or or whoever you want to say, um, if if you see Jim Nance and you hear that voice, it puts you in just like a ah, warm blanket. Sports. A warm mm-hmm. blanket. And I think Joe Buck is probably similar. It's like, I know this guy, even though I might not know this guy. And Clooney loved talking with Jim Nance. And guess what? We gave George Clooney the opportunity on Saturday night. Exactly, Schrager. That How is cool a perfect is way to, you know what? Because we're making dreams happen. We're connecting dots. We're out here just connecting the constellations for the Big do. Dipper. Mm-hmm. Chris, I, I didn't ask you this, but I couldn't even look at George Clooney because I was so embarrassed. I was, by the way, like that 15 year old boy that just like asked the girl to like the dance. You I were couldn't so have been weirder. quiet and so yeah, adorable. I was so cute. It was so gross. Did he smell good? Because you were like basically right up next to him. Yeah, I mean, I was like massaging his shoulders. I mean, just give the guy, <laughs> what happened to six feet? We still have COVID protocol, Chris. That, <laughs> relax. He always smells good. He mm-hmm. was so, so nice. And his voice was terrific. And yes, it was a moment. And can I say I, something? The guys yeah. he rolls with, they were cool as shit. Like, cool. He, he was with normal guys. And I think, Dude, you know, yeah. Hollywood celebrity, it's going to be a bodyguard. It's No, these are like normal guys <laughs> that, that anyone would have grown up in their hometown. So this is uh, probably nauseating for everyone at home to hear three people at entertainment talk about how cool this other guy in entertainment was. But we're all just awestruck that freaking George Clooney was at the table next to us. It was pretty neat. Hey, look, you leave those doors open. We're coming in, you know? Oh, my God. The are Ukrainian we ever... girl wanted to just have, you know, but he was cool with it. Leave it open. All Let them the see. girls wanted to go in. I felt, hey, I, um... I, I, I felt for him, though. And real, my last name, and I guess you guys probably feel this, too. Like, and it's not a fishbowl, but like he sits down at a table and literally 60 different people are, are their meals stop and are just staring and taking photos of him. Do you think that's every day of his life? Yeah, yeah. that's why he lives in Italy. <laughs> Yeah, he's, but he chose to go to Craig's and he left the door open. I mean, he wanted it to be out a little bit. He wanted a normal saying, night. He was he yeah, felt cooped normal up. Night. You yeah. wanted to see. You wanted to see who was at the putting zoo. You know. Yeah. Um. Before we let you go, because we know we have to. What do you like? about this comes out on Thursday. What do you like about? I guess my game, um, Carolina. They looked fantastic against, against the Saints. And what are some storylines you like going into this weekend? I'm so pissed I didn't take your bet on that. I ate shit I on my sneakers. I was so bet. confident I was so too. Dumb. I know. I'm sorry. I just knew, I'm and I'm sorry. I took. I told Carissa a thousand times that Panthers were like the lock of the week. The Saints had just been I way too listen. high after the Packers, sorry. and then lost all their players, uh, coaches with COVID, and then Marshawn Lattimore's out. But the Panthers are fun and they're interesting. They could very easily be three and zero oh by the end of this week, and we're going to yeah. be like, are they I good? Think gonna be. Young defense. Brian Burns, really good young player. Jeremy Chin, great new personality, second year player. But you love what I'm fascinated your by. Your Carolina Panthers. <laughs> my Carolina Panthers. What I'm fascinated by is what's going on with the Texans quarterback situation. So it's early in the week. I don't know if Tyrod Taylor is going to play. If it's a rookie, yeah. Davis Mills, third round pick out of Stanford. Welcome to the big, uh, big national showtime game because everyone's going to be watching on Thursday night. Robbie Anderson and Sam Darnold look very comfortable together. They have a great they were connection. Cute. That was good. How cute is um, Robbie Anderson forgetting that that mascot was um, yeah. a panther Sir and he called it a bear? Sir Purr. It's one of my favorite things. If you guys know what we're talking about, just Google Robbie Anderson and mascot. It's very funny. You should. It's right. good. We what love you. Um, Aaron, the one that I'm interested in, though, is will you be on the sidelines for Rams Buccaneers Sunday? Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. What which, do you want? Okay, what? Which ooh, sideline will you question. be on and how is... How is that decided when you've got two sideline reporters assigned to the game? Is it a flip of the coin or do you have seniority and get to just pick? I am not going to divulge okay. Okay. how, yeah, but yeah, I'm freaking, I can't wait. And Shregs, uh, I know it's only week three. Obviously we just saw week two, your thoughts on what we saw out of Tampa Bay and their defense as well. I mean, th- I was telling Chris that Greg Olson, maybe I just told my dad, Greg Olson just basically said, you've got to play the perfect game to beat them. Yes, it's early, but what are your thoughts about them? So I texted, and I, I don't like doing this. Like I texted this, I texted a very um, high level NFL coach, a guy that I really respect. And I said, and it was during the game, I'm in the air and I'm watching it. It's 28 25. And, the, and this right. coach had already played earlier in the day and he was watching the game too. And I said, gosh. They're letting Atlanta hang around. And he wrote back, they look bored. They'll win by 20. And they did. Like, it, it was almost like they were like, all right. Like, because they could have buried Atlanta, beat them by 50. It was that one-sided. Atlanta crawled back. It's amazing. And Kyle Brandt 
my colleague on Good Morning Football had this stat. And I, I can't imagine this. Brady's a few touchdown passes away from having more touchdown passes in his 40s than he did in his 20s. And he's still just 44. Because he's um, never had this many weapons. It's incredible. He threw five and like quietly threw five touchdown passes quietly on Sunday. And, I, you know, the Rams are going to have a defensive game plan and they beat him last year in Tampa. I don't know. It's really hard to stop what they've got going on right now. Oh, Michael's brought that up um, on the sun on the opening week on that Thursday night game where he said, is he even better now than he was in his 20s? And they were saying, yeah, because he's seen everything. Everything. There's not a defense. There's not a anything scheme that you can throw in front of him that, for him that he hasn't seen. So the I think there's the a edge- there's a challenge for us as sports media how to skin this cat any different way. So like we wake up in the morning, I do a daily show and it's like. It's one thing if it's a weekly show and Coach Wanstat right. or Strahan or Jimmy on the weekly morning show is like, hey, here's what makes Brady great. To do it every day, every like day. it's really like, what's the fresh perspective? This guy, it's he's an alien. He's modern science defied. And it's like, how do you have a fresh perspective on Brady after doing this for 20 years and every day being even better than the last one? It, it's an amazing yeah. story. And yet I think there's almost... I have not fatigue, but like, I don't know how else to describe it, how good it is. Mm-hmm. It's I a agree. Good do you, it's awesome. Do you have a calm down award or do you want us to I let do. you go? I have a go. calm down award before I go. Let me tell you something, America, and all you out there in, in Los Angeles going to Craig's oh. or, my, or Jersey Mike's and everything in between. <laughs> um, I've heard something during the pandemic, during the quarantine and during the summer that New York City is dead. Uh, calm down, folks. New York City is alive. It's as be- as good as it's ever been. It is on fire in a good way right now. People are okay. out. People look great. They spent the quarantine reassessing things. People <laughs> left. Guess what? People left. They went to the suburbs. You know what? We didn't want them anyway. Those are the tools. Those are the people we didn't want here. The cool people stayed and cool people are moving in. So to everyone who says New York City is dead, as a New York City resident, I will tell you, New York City is alive and well. And if you're cool enough, I would love to show you my city next time you are in town, anyone listening. But if you're scared of New York City or you think it's a terrible place, please keep saying that and stay in your suburbs behind your white picket fences. I'm good where I am. Let's go. Let's go. Brian just texted me and said, when can he meet you in New York? I don't know. I've got a room for Brian anytime (laughs) he wants. Tip your waiter 20% unless his name's Brian. Then you invite him over. Anytime Brian the waiter wants to come to New York, I'll give him three months he can stay with me. (laughs) Oh my God. I love it. Shrakes, thank you. Love you. You guys are great. Thanks for inviting me on. Bye, honey. See you next week. Dinner at six. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.